I'm Steve and this is This Week with Cars. Behind me is the Austin Healey 3000 BT7 that previously I tried to get running but then found out that the engine was full of rice. If you haven't seen that video, click there and watch that one first. I've reassembled the engine now, I've rebuilt the head, I've rebuilt the carburetors and I put a new stainless exhaust on the car. And now I'm basically at the same point I was when I started on this car last time. We'll see if we can get the car to run and then I need to tune the carbs because they've been taken off and rebuilt. I'll have to reset all the throttle linkages. We'll see how good we can get this car to run. Here's where we're starting at. This is a BT7 Austin Healey 3000. So this is a very rare triple carb car. These are SUs. These do feature external fuel bowls on them and the mixture adjustment is on the bottom of the carburetor. Another nice feature of these is right next to the fuel bowl is a little lever that you can push up that raises the piston a certain amount so that you can use that for tuning them. Before I make any adjustments, I'm going to see if the car will start first and then go from there. If it does start, I'll have to see what I can do to keep it running and then I'll uh, disconnect the throttle linkages and we need to get the air moving through all three of these carburetors the same before we can really start making any other adjustments with it. Let's hop inside, see if the car will start. I did put a new ignition switch in it. I didn't have any keys for it. You can hear the fuel pump running now. I did have to put in a fuel pump as well because the old one was all frozen up. So let's pull the choke out and we'll see if it starts. Alright, I'm not getting anything at all. The carburetors might be so far off, and it's pretty cold in here today. I'm going to use a little bit of starting fluid, see if that helps. Alright, with starter fluid, let's try it again. Wanted to pop off that time. There we go. Try with a little bit less choke. Might be purely running on starter fluid right now. Give it another go. The choke pulled out slightly. It is idling on its own right now. If it stays idling, I'll be able to move into the engine bay. It should get easier as it warms up. You can see we have good oil pressure now. The temperature gauge must not be working correctly. So it's about 50 degrees in this room and this is the first time I fired it up. What I'm going to do now is loosen these clamps that hold the throttle linkages together. That way I can adjust the throttle, the idle screws, on each of these carburetors individually. so that I can make sure that they are all set the same. Now take my sink tool. Watch, you can see that red line go up when I put it up to the carburetor. So I need to take this reading on all three cars and then adjust the idle so that they're all the same. Now 
that I have all three carburetor idle settings about the same, I can look into tuning it. And to start with a base tune, what you want to do is pull off on your little pin there, and that will raise the piston slightly. And depending on how the carburetor reacts, lets you know if you need to take the mixture screw more lean or more rich. If the engine speed decreases immediately, like we just saw, that means that the carburetor should have more fuel to it, so I need to richen it up. If the engine speed increases and stays increased, that means that it's running too rich. So I'm going to get these carburetors adjusted. Uh, I have my SU adjusting wrench here. You just turn the nut on the bottom side of the carburetor to uh, lean it and richen it up. So I'll play around with these for a second, get these all adjusted where I want them, and then I'll have to recheck it and adjust all of the idles again. Now that I have everything set where I want it, one thing you need to remember when you're tightening up these throttles is you see this amount of play? See that play in there right there? You need to make sure that your clamps are set in the same position when you tighten it down for each of the carbs. Otherwise, once you give a throttle, they're going to go out of sync. The best thing to do is to shut the car off so you can get the slack taken out of those get them all tightened down exactly where you wanted them to be. That's sounding pretty good. Now the air cleaners are going to change the mixture again slightly. So I'll need to get those mounted up and check everything over again. And then do my final idle adjustment for the idle speed that I'd like the car to run at after I have the air cleaners mounted on there. I have the air cleaners installed now. I like these styles of air cleaners because you can remove this part right here and then you can put your sink tool on and you can still sink these by just removing these nuts right here. And it makes it really easy because you don't have a big assembly that you have to take off to, to adjust your carburetor. It looks like the rattling sound that you've probably been hearing throughout this video. The hood hinge is slightly hitting the body here. Not sure what can be done about that besides moving this back a little bit, maybe putting a little piece of rubber in there. But if that's been bothering you, that's what that noise has been. For the first time now, let's see if it moves under its own power. So I'll put it into first gear. Clutch works. Brakes do work. Feel a little, I guess they're all right. Like the drums just need to be pushed out a little bit. And here we go. You can see I have snow on the ground right now. Transmission's a little noisy. Looks like the speedometer does not work. are warmed up. A couple final words of advice on tuning. Double check everything, triple check everything. Every time you make a little change, you're going to have to go back and check everything else. And another thing you need to keep in mind is go and drive the car afterwards. There's always a little bit of tuning that you're going to want to change. And sometimes you have to sacrifice what seems like a good tune for drivability. Let the car tell you how it wants to be tuned and make sure that you tune it to have the most enjoyment of driving it. Another mistake that I see people making all the time is they will send out their carburetors to someone who will rebuild them 
you know this is a place on the internet that all they do is rebuild carbs and they will send you your carbs back now those carbs are going to be set to factory settings and 99.99 percent of the time those carbs are still going to need to be tuned once you put them on your car don't ever think that when you send in your carbs and you get them back that they're going to be set on how your car needs them to be set i put a tremendous amount of hours into this car I hope that you enjoyed watching these videos. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.